Hey y'all, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. To start off the week, we had dinner at my parents' house and my dad made some soup beans, cornbread, country ham, fried potatoes, and some sauerkraut and hot dogs. Everything was delicious. And yes, I always have to have ketchup on my fried potatoes and I love having it on my soup beans. Let me know in the comments if you do that too. On Tuesday, I made some chicken noodle soup in my Instant Pot. We have all been trying to get over this sickness, and this was the perfect recipe for sore throats. I have really been loving my Instant Pot lately on these busy work nights. It really does save me a lot of time. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize for this footage. I had a light bulb go out, so it's kind of dark, so forgive me. But I just have my Instant Pot set to saute. I have added in some olive oil, and I let that heat up. And now I'm adding in some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I did season them with some salt and pepper and then I'm just doing that to the other side as well feel free to use whatever seasonings that you want to here obviously I did end up adding in some of this Trader Joe's 21 seasoning salute one thing that I will say that drives me nuts about the instant pot is my meats always want to stick to the bottom of the pot even though I've added in the olive oil if you know how to prevent that, please let me know. But I just let that cook for a few minutes on each side just to kind of get a little bit of uh, browning on it. And then I removed it to a separate plate. It's not going to be fully cooked. I added in a little bit more oil. And then I added in some carrots and some celery. You could add in an onion here if you wanted to. But I just seasoned it with some onion powder. And I'm just going to saute that around for a few minutes just until it starts to get tender. And then I'm going to add in a good scoop of minced garlic and let that go for an additional minute or so. Now, this step is important. You're going to want to deglaze your pan. So I added in about a half a cup, I would say, of chicken broth. And I'm just taking my wooden spatula and kind of scraping up all those brown bits on the bottom, all that flavor that you want in your soup. I'm um, going to deglaze it pretty fast. And then I'm just going to add back in my chicken with all of the juices that laid in that plate. And then I'm going to add in the rest of that chicken broth. I am using a reduced sodium version, and you do need six cups. And then to boost up the flavor, I'm using some of this Better Than Bouillon paste. And the recipe calls for the bouillon cubes, but I had this in my fridge and that's what I wanted to use. Then I'm just seasoning it with some extra onion powder and plenty of black pepper. I'm going to give that a quick little stir. And then I am just going to add in one bay leaf. I'm going to place my top on, make sure that it's set to sealing. And then I'm going to set the timer for seven minutes. So after my timer went off, I did a quick release and then I'm just taking my tongs and carefully removing that chicken to a separate plate. As you can see, that meat is just falling apart. It is so tender. Um, I honestly probably could have skipped this step and just took a spatula and broke it up in the Instant Pot, but oh well. Um, if you wanted to, you could dice up the chicken or you could even leave it into big chunks, whatever your family prefers. But now that I have all that chicken removed, I'm going to turn my pot back onto saute to bring that broth up to a boil. So I did did take out that bay leaf and I did decide to shred up the chicken. I didn't even bother dirtying up two forks. I just used those same tongs and just kind of pulled apart the meat like that. I really do need to start cooking with chicken thighs more often. They are so much more flavorful and they really are the perfect addition to any soup. Um, so back to that boiling broth, I'm going to add in a half a bag of egg noodles and I'm just going to cook those until they are done. I don't remember exactly how long it took, but the recipe will be linked down below as always. But now I'm going to add back in that cooked chicken and give it a little taste test to make sure that the seasonings are right and give it a final stir. And that is it. So here is my bowl. How beautiful is that? I topped it with some extra black pepper and some parsley. This was honestly the best chicken noodle soup that I have ever made. I was super impressed and my kids loved it, which always makes me happy. And the leftovers were even better. Up next, I'm making some meatballs. So you are going to need one pound of ground beef. If you are a bigger family, you could easily double this recipe. You are also going to need one egg that has been beaten. This is a great binder to keep everything all together. You'll also need some Italian style breadcrumbs. I believe it was about a third of a cup. This can wasn't quite enough, so I had to open up another can, but I'm just going to dump that on in, followed by some Parmesan cheese. Um, you could use fresh if you wanted to. That's what I had planned on doing, but my Parmesan block went bad, unfortunately. But now I'm going to season this up with some onion powder, 
parsley, salt and pepper. I'm sorry, I know you guys can hear my kid in the background. Um, I'm also gonna add in a big scoop of minced garlic and I'm just gonna get in there with my hands and mix everything together that way. Just get everything combined. You definitely don't want to overwork these or they are not going to have the best texture and they're just not gonna be as good. But to a foil lined cookie sheet, I'm just spraying that with some nonstick cooking spray and I'm just going to roll these up into little meatballs. So I found this fun shaped pasta over at Myers and buying stuff like this really does help my kids to eat better. So whatever works. Um, and also I'm going to be making these sweet Hawaiian crescent rolls. Why I filmed myself unrolling a whole can of crescent rolls. I really don't know, but I did film it. So it's going on in. So enjoy. I wanted to try a different sauce just to kind of switch things up a bit. So I used this roasted garlic by Barilla. I really liked it, but my kids did not. So I guess I won't be repurchasing it, sadly, at least for a while. Um, but here is my plate. I just have that pasta on the bottom with two of the meatballs. And I just dusted it with some Parmesan cheese and some parsley. Um, I have one of those crescent rolls that were really good, by the way. And then I have a Caesar salad just using one of these Caesar chopped kits from Walmart. I have been on a huge Caesar salad kick here lately. But yeah, this meal was super simple, but amazing. So the next day I did turn those leftover meatballs into barbecue meatballs and I did use this Pioneer Woman's Peach Whiskey Barbecue Sauce, which I really liked. I just simmered that into the pot with the meatballs just until that sauce clung to the meatballs and I served it with some steamed mixed veggies and the leftover crescent rolls and then I also whipped up a really quick potato salad, which I am going to show how I made now. So if you have been with me for a while now, you have seen me make this before, but if you are new, here you go. So I have about two pounds of russet potatoes that I have peeled and cut into bite-sized pieces. I'm going to add those to a pot on the stove. I am going to season that water with some salt. Potatoes need quite a bit of salt. Um, and I'm just going to cook those until they are fork tender. While those were cooking, I went ahead and got started on the sauce, I guess you would call it. Um, so I'm measuring out one cup of mayo. I did try to cut back on the calories some, and I did use this light mayo, which I normally don't. I could definitely tell the difference. The regular mayonnaise is quite a bit better, but this was still good too. Um, I'm adding in some mustard. I don't measure. And then I'm adding in some dill pickles that I have cut up. I know a lot of people use relish, but I do not like that. So so this is what I prefer and I'm just going to give that a quick little mix and then I'm going to add in some boiled eggs. So this is my favorite way to dice up eggs. I just put a wire rack over my bowl and just kind of smash it through those little holes and it creates the perfect dice. So I'm just going to season those with some salt and pepper and then I'm going to add in those cool down potatoes and season those with salt and pepper as well. And then I'm just going to simply combine all that together. Yes, I know I should have got a bigger mixing bowl. That drives me crazy too, but I made it work. Lastly, I just topped it with some paprika to make it pretty. And then I covered it with some cling wrap and popped it in the fridge for a few hours to chill. On Saturday, I went out with some friends and we got some hibachi. So here's a short little clip of that. And then on Sunday, I made this cheesy pesto chicken bake. I have just took two boneless skinless chicken breasts and cut those down the middle to make four thinner pieces and I have seasoned both sides with just some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. To a 9 by 13 casserole dish, I'm just spraying it with some nonstick cooking spray and then I'm adding in my chicken. 
To a mixing bowl, I'm going to throw in this block of cream cheese and also some of this basil pesto. You need about a third of a cup. Um, I'm just stirring that together. You want to make sure that your cream cheese is at room temperature so that it mixes in really well. But if you forget, you can always just pop it in the microwave for a bit to melt it down. Now I'm just going to plop some dollops onto each piece of chicken and spread that out as evenly as I can just to kind of coat the whole top of the chicken. And then lastly, I'm just going to take some shredded mozzarella cheese and sprinkle that evenly over the top. This is going to go in the oven at 375 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. And here is what it looks like straight from the oven. My house was smelling amazing and just look at how bubbly and cheesy that looks. Here is my plate. Um, that chicken was so good. I highly recommend it. I served it with some asparagus and just one of these Parmesan cheese pasta sides that I have had sitting in my pantry for a while that I wanted to get rid of. But that is going to wrap up another week. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you are new here, I would love it if you would stick around and subscribe. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing week and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.